his love Why no salvation You shall live forever In Jesus Christ the Lord justice, you who labor for peace, you who steady the plow in the field, oh the Lord, come and be filled here at the stage. shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. Let each woman and man learn from the stranger. We're not so different and so much unites us. And the power of love shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of Jesus Christ our brother, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now prepare our hearts to celebrate this Eucharist together. Confident of God's mercy and love, we confess our faults. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Together with the angels, let us praise God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Son, Lord God, Lamb of 
God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see. 
From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Lord, to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, 
Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from the Father. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In October of 2020, the world watched breathlessly as 33 miners in Chile began to emerge from the collapsed mine where they were trapped for 69 days. Among the most difficult things the miners said they had to adjust to after coming to the surface was sunlight. Having been in the dark for over two months, some miners said that sunlight felt like needle pricks in their eyes. Surprisingly, over time, we can accommodate ourselves to darkness, even complete darkness. You can experience this accommodation if you go to Cologne, Germany, and make a reservation at a small eatery called Unsicht Bar, literally translated as the invisible. It gets its name because it is run by the blind. Here, patrons enjoy wine, cuisine, and conversation in pitch darkness. Even the glow of a mobile phone is not permitted in this establishment. Diners are attended by blind waiter guides who describe the food both in terms of its preparation and its location on the plate. Since its opening in 2002, Unsicht Bar has given people with sight the experience of what it means to be blind. After a while, patrons say they can accommodate themselves to the lack of sight and even become comfortable with the experience. How often in life do we allow ourselves to be compromised and choose to remain in the dark? As St. Paul says, we are children of the light, but we prefer darkness. The scriptures are all about reversals, especially of sight, of being able to see beneath the surface, to see the heart, to see with the heart, rather than just with our eyes. As the fox tells the prince in Antoine Saint-Exupéry's story, The Little Prince, it is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. The Bible is filled with examples of how precisely true this is. In the First Testament, when Samuel comes to anoint the son of Jesse as king of Israel, he is amazed that none of Jesse's strapping, handsome, older sons are the ones that God has chosen. Rather, he is surprised to find out that it is David, the runt of the litter, who has been called in from shepherding the flock, who is the chosen one. The Gospels contain even more examples of how first impressions based on what we see are so misleading. God choosing a simple, poor peasant girl to be the mother of his son, and Jesus choosing his ragtag group of disciples, all without resumes, are two prime examples. Of course, it is Jesus, more than anyone else, who defies expectations. And while this is consistent throughout all the synoptic Gospels, it is in John's writing that this is seen most clearly. John is among the most poetic of the authors in the Bible. He is not interested, as are the other evangelists, in giving the objective details of Jesus' life or in telling more facts about who Jesus is. It has been said that the use of metaphor 
is a sign of intelligence, but for John, the understanding of metaphor is a sign of faith. Throughout his gospel, John has Jesus identify himself not in terms of any vital statistics or biographical data, but through what have been called the I am statements. Again and again, Jesus says things like, I am he who is called the Christ, I am the light of the world, I am from above, before Abraham was, I am, I am the good shepherd, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we see this especially in today's gospel where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. His audience is confused. And when he says he has come down from heaven, it's altogether too much. They begin to murmur to one another in their literal-minded confusion. Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know so well? Where's he getting all of this? Just who does he think he is? Jesus' words were spoken to stir the imagination, to touch the heart, to teach more deeply than the head can know. But because they fell upon stony ears of people with no imagination, they caused only confusion, anger, and disrespect. And by the end of the story, we hear that many of his disciples turned back and no longer went with him. Faith requires imagination. It takes a heart that is open to see what the mind cannot see. As the famous preacher William Willimon says, faith in Jesus is not so much something to be measured or calculated. It isn't an algebraic equation with so many miracles equaling so much of a savior. It isn't a matter of knowing Jesus' parents or discovering his historic identity. Faith is trusting in the poetry that Jesus says is more than you can wrap your mind around. Willimon concludes, he is word that can never be fully spoken. He is bread that will not much feed your belly, but will eternally nourish your soul. In other words, sisters and brothers, faith resides not so much in the head as in the heart, in the seat of the imagination. As St. Paul says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Timothy Radcliffe, former Master General of the Dominicans, has said in his book, Alive in God, A Christian Imagination, which I quoted just a couple of weeks ago, he said this, the enemy of faith is neither atheism nor secularism as such, but a certain flattening of the imagination, a reductionist understanding of reality that drains life of meaning, transcendence, and for many Christians, gospel-inspired adventure. The gospel story today of the rejection of Jesus by so many closest to him who thought they knew him so well is a challenge to each of us to live the words of the hymn we know so well. Amazing grace, I once was blind, but now I see. For as the great Helen Keller warned, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence now, let us pray for our needs, the needs of the church, and the needs of the whole world. 
for Christian unity, that Catholics and all believers who share a common baptism seek unity with and understanding of one another. For this we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations, that they work together to create economic structures that will ensure all have enough food and that they take immediate steps to feed the world's hungry children and their families. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those in prison, that our prisons be places of care, providing opportunities for offenders to break patterns of intergenerational violence and establish behaviors of responsibility and self-care. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the success of the strategies put in place to fight COVID-19, that this disease will be successfully brought under control and eliminated as a health risk. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing of all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish, for this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who have passed into new life this week, especially Peter Hassett, for them we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our personal needs and the intentions written in the parish book of prayers, which we now offer in the silence of our heart. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we come reborn in the Spirit to celebrate our adoption in the Lord Jesus Christ. Touch our hearts, help them grow toward the life you have promised. Touch our lives, make them signs of your love for all people. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear Of him who spoke as none ever spoke But we believe him near We may not touch his hands and side Nor follow where he trod Yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and see. Where you are found That when our life of faith is done In realms of clearer light We may behold you as you are In full and endless sight we walk by faith and not by sight No gracious words we hear Of him who spoke as none ever spoke But we believe him near Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O Lord, be pleased to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered 
and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother, and Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. We join together now and pray with confidence for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's safely share with each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Though not physically present at this Mass, as the baptized, we are intimately united as the body of Christ as we participate in this spiritual Holy Communion. See you. 
your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. See his love poured out as blood. This man speaks harshly. Who can listen to his word? We shall no longer follow him. Follow him. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. See his love poured out as blood. Let us pray. O Lord, may the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. After our final song, we'll be back with some announcements. This Mass is ended. Go and glorify God by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, summer is certainly moving on, isn't it? Uh, medical school has started, it's, it's up and running. And this coming Saturday, August 14th, we're gonna try to have our annual Mass Outdoors. We do this once a year for the Vigil of the Assumption. This year, of course, the Feast of the Assumption is next Sunday. So the Saturday Vigil Mass at 4.30, we hope can be under the tent. It'll, of course, depend on weather. So if you would like to join us for that, please bring, please bring a chair and come along for that. And then the other event we have coming up is on Sunday, August 29th from 7 to 9.30, and it's our Dancing Under the Stars with the Jim Tudini Big Band and our parishioner Bobby Militello featured in, in, that, in that band. And we weren't able to do it last year, but we love to have people come. We usually get over 200, 250 people dancing under the stars. So you put it on your calendar and try to join us. Stay well, stay safe, and God bless you. And who may go up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? clean of hand and pure of heart who devoted their lives
lives to Him. They may go on.